This is a, a new video that came out of, from World of Warcraft just today. I want to see. Um, it's about the new end game content for, for new players on War Within. Welcome to a special edition of WowCast, and thank you so much for joining us. Launch is right around the corner, and today we are joined by a few incredible guests to share how dungeons, raids, and PvP has evolved, as well as new features like delves and warbands. Please introduce yourselves. Hello, I'm Laura Sardinia. I'm lead UX designer in the WoW team. Hey, I'm Morgan Day, one of the associate game directors on World of Warcraft. And I'm John Mark Campbell. I'm a lead gameplay engineer on World of Warcraft. How has the team been approaching what's waiting for players at max level for the War Within? As we've been talking about you know, the content that players will be experiencing once they reach the end game, there's really been three main pillars we've been focusing on. The first is variety. We want to make sure that there's all kinds of activities for you to do, whether it be in the outdoor world or with some of our new features like delves that are really going to add some new variety. Bro, I can't wait for delves. Delves are going to be so amazing. For those players. Additionally, we really want to focus on progression and giving players new challenges to try to overcome in the end game. And finally, the story and making sure that that narrative is front and center. Now, whether that's tied into some of these features and some of the content that we built there, or maybe it's focused on the end game campaign that is going to be built out as players progress as well. Something that I think is going to be really transformative and I'm excited about for The War Within is one of our major features Warbands. If you aren't familiar, this is a feature that really ties all your characters together. And really, this is our opportunity to make sure that we're... This is already in game, by the way. You already have all your characters, uh, at least four of your characters displayed on a main screen. Um, there's stuff they can share together, like achievements and items. So this is already implemented. We're really respecting the time of the player behind the keyboard and not constantly asking you to you know, maybe re-earn something on one character that you've already earned on another one. That's all which changing with the War Within, which is really exciting. John Mark, can you tell us more about the significant undertakings that Warbands is about? Yeah, it's no easy task to reimagine in a modern context what we've done over the past 20 years. I think Morgan at BlizzCon, you called this several features in a trench coat. Yeah. And that's, it's very true. In a nutshell, it's really a, a philosophical shift in how we approach the game. Instead of being from a character focus, we're taking a step back and approaching it more from what the players accomplished over the entire time that they played the game. Historically, we've added on pieces to individual systems from the engineering side to support features going into expansions. But if we could wave a magic wand and go back 20 years ago, knowing where we're headed today, likely we would have organized those things very differently from an engineering perspective. Yeah, and I really feel like this is easily one of the largest undertakings that our engineering team has had to you know, develop for an expansion. You know, we always used to look at, you know, updates to future patches where like, let's make this a little bit easier for your alt to catch up or earn some progression there. Or Bro, all catching up with alts was always a pain. I'm so glad they're making that easier. I got 12 characters. It's a pain in the ass whenever I gotta catch up with the others. For now, that is something that we're really architecting from the forefront and really beginning the conversation with that. I think when it's all said and done, every engineering sub team is gonna have touched this feature. So what value do warbands bring? It's all about being able to transfer stuff between your characters. If you have items that you want to send from one character to the other, you just put it in the warband bank. Awesome. If you have currency that you want to send from one character to the other, you can just grab it directly from Damn. all the characters that Perfect. are on your account. Or if you're a druid and you're going through one of the old raids and you get a piece of plate gear, your warrior can just equip it. Yeah, one of the things I love about it is the shared renown, right? Like there's so much reputation that I'm gaining across my characters that will all be combined and consolidated on one account-wide reputation there. And there's a lot of fun stuff that, that also enables when it comes to like trying to find, you know, more variety in the way I approach the game. For instance, I was leveling, I think my second character on the beta recently, and I made sure to go out and, you know, turn Warband um, questing on so that I saw all the quests that I already completed. It's a oh, little bit less bro, opaque, I gotta do so that. it's kind of transparent. And that way you know, like, okay, I've done that quest on one of my other characters. So I can kind of cherry pick all the reputation. Bro, I, I gotta do that. I gotta remember to mark that. ...from quests that I haven't completed yet. Something else when it comes to, you know, maybe gearing that new character, there's actually a new type of 
item called Warbound Until Equipped or Woo. This is a new item that will drop in all kinds of endgame content. Woo. And including things like Mythic Plus and Raids, where these will be bonus drops, where they'll drop a slightly lower item level where you might have earned that reward. And then you can put that in your bank or send it to one of your alts. And actually, once you equip it on one of your characters, then Dance. it will bind to that okay, character. So sense. the fact that it binds to the warband means we can be really generous with that gear as we're dropping for alts. I imagine as part of this overhaul that it's led to some unique challenges with the UI. Oh yeah, that's for sure. UI revamp continues, and Warbands was a great opportunity for us to revamp the character select. Last time we did a big um, entry screen update was during um, Shadowlands. So with Warbands, we did a whole big user experience um, revamp there. We kept the- They promised they are gonna eventually rep let you have other, other screens here that you can select, not only this one. But the main pro the main point is to have all the all the main four characters they use on the same screen. Right side list, but now you can drag and drop much easier your characters, and we have a favorite section there, which is really cool because they're all cross helm characters that you can have. So you don't need to be back and forth choosing characters; they're all going to be there for you, very very easy. And also the tooltips are all new. So now you just mouse over, and it's all there for you. So. Pretty, pretty great improvements overall. And also the, the new bank for your Warband character. So a lot of good improvements that we wanted to make it sure it feels natural to play as and it just feels great. That's what a good UI should be, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, that's what we're looking for. Uh, there's nice. a lot of functionality out of that too. Like you can craft straight out of your Warband bank. So you can just dump all that stuff in your Warband bank and you know, one of your other characters who might be able to use that profession stuff will then be able to access it much more quickly. You don't have to mail it around and you know, it's really looking to streamline a lot of those experiences. For our nice. Mythic Plus runners or dungeons, um, any kind of activity that requires a group, we also revamped that left panel, the little ear pane <laughs> that you push it out. You can now apply rape markers much easier. Great. You can that's also a, assign really different good. folks in your group to do so, which before wasn't um, that easy. And also you can change very easily as well uh, the difficulty of the instance. One of the other things I, I love that we added is hubs, mm -hmm. right? So on the main map, there's often, as you are progressing in the end game, there's all kinds of content that might be really consolidated in one area. And sometimes it's like, oh, there's so much stuff here. And it makes the map feel like it might have a little bit of clutter on it. So we now have a, a way to kind of consolidate some of that. The hubs, as Morgan was explaining, when you get in the War Within, you're gonna see this castle city icon that we're gonna have in each zone. And Dornagal is the biggest one. When you click nice. on it, you can see the city map. And one of the technologies that we wanna add, the hub gonna prioritize for you what is the most important content for you to do. Of course, you can choose to do something else, but we wanna clean up the surroundings of hubs and main cities. So that's the kind of tech so that we're looking looks into UI as well, and we want to evolve and get players' feedback. Also, for the end game, we have a new type of quest that's called meta quests, but those are end game important repeatable quests, and then they are uh, this, the classic exclamation mark, you know, above the NPC heads, um, but it's blue because it reminds of the daily, the old dailies, um, oh, but you're going to cool. have spikes around it oh. so you know that's like oh Andy. i should i should check Andy. this out <laughs> yeah so the hub gonna when there's something uh, available as a meta quest for that week the hub will show that to players so you know that's something that you should do if nice. you don't have too much time you probably should prioritize those because they give very very good in-game rewards so that's the kind of technology that ui is trying to help players yeah that's really helpful you might be coming back or you're veteran players or you just want to you know do the easiest thing for the week and that's gonna be out there on the map for you, so you don't have to go back to the icon soup. Are there any extra quality of life improvements to the UI? Sure, I've seen a lot of the community very happy about the search bars. So oh, we keep yeah, adding those are very those bands. We have a search bar there oh, as well. In Dragonfly, we had the search for in the options menu. Professions, Thank you for of the course, stretch. if you're searching for something specific, bags, we added that in Dragonfly, oh, and the talents. But now, uh, the spellbook is getting a whole revamp, and it's so good to have a search bar there. The spell book looks beautiful now. Yeah, like really you can have two book. pages and that way you don't have to paginate as much. But if you really prefer one pane, there is an icon at the top, which is the collapse one. It comes back to the original classic size. So we know some players really love that and we wanna make sure that everyone is happy with the new spell book. Having the time to, to, to do all that stuff makes us so happy because we wanna keep the classic wall look, mm -hmm. even though it looks modern, but it's, it still feel, feel wow, and that's really important for us. 
Morgan, earlier you mentioned you want to empower players to play the way they want to play. How is that going to be approached in the new feature, Delves? Yeah, so, you know, like we've discussed, Delves are really bite-sized content, really targeted on those players who love progression in the outdoor world and maybe aren't like so me. excited about going into group content or queued content. Something that they gave us feedback on is that they really wish that there was a way for these to be a bit more difficult and maybe give them a bit of a challenge too. So Delves, while the rewards might end at tier eight, so that the item level that you're getting stops there, the difficulty tier goes to 11. And when you reach that difficulty, there will be a hard mode version of Zekfir, which for people who might be familiar with some of those solo challenges like the Mage Tower of the Past, this will be a new solo challenge for players to really, you know, try to tackle over time. And we nice. imagine this is something that will take quite a bit of effort and, you know, progression to get to the point where you'll be able to defeat Zekfir at that difficulty. And waiting for you, if you're able to do that, is a really awesome, unique, mount. kind of voided out version of that customizable Delve mount that you're gonna be rewarded Damn, with very nice. early on in your Delve progression. Can you talk about the different varieties of Delves? Yeah, um, so with Delves, there's 13 Delves in total. And something that we really wanted to focus on was to make sure that each Delve had multiple variants, right? So while there's 12 Delves that you'll experience and be sent to, you know, a couple in each zone. Every time you zone in, we wanted to make sure that, you know, it wasn't just some small tweaks here and there, like, oh, the spawning changed a little bit, or maybe the, there's some traps that look a little bit different. Um, the actual objectives are changing. Sometimes the way you- Yeah, I hope they learn from the technology they had in Shadowlands with the whole roguelite thing to make those um, change their challenges over time so that they keep being interesting, especially between characters traverse through the delve completely changes. Maybe you're going to start at the end of the delve this time and work your way backwards. So we wanted to make sure that these uh, different variants were really distinct with each new delve. And we also wanted to make sure that, like I said earlier, with progression to be a large part of this. So there's a couple different you know, aspects of that. For one, the Great Vault, which is something that a lot of our you know, raid and PvP and Mythic Plus players are familiar with, is going to get an outdoor row with the War Within. Awesome. So the loot that comes from Delves, we're finally we going to use sure that, that vault. While in. it was bite sized content, that doesn't mean it can't be really rewarding, right? So if you're able to, you know, work your way up and defeat uh, level eight, which is where the loot kind of caps out at, your Great Vault will actually reward you with items that are higher item level than you would get out of like a mythic plus 10 end of run chest. So it's wow. really, really good. That's really crazy. And we want That's to make great. sure that you're, be, you're using that, you know, gear that you're in along the way to work through the different delve tiers and finally, you know, take the fight to Zekvir and by extension Zalatath as well, which also gets us into feeling like delves should be a big part of our end game story as well and making sure that they're paying into this narrative of Zalatath and all of our epic heroes that we're, we're experiencing along the way. Something else that we added in the UI for Delves is, you know, there's now a whole tab that exists for Delves that will exist down with, you know, the Adventure Journal, where you can see Mythic Plus and see your seasonal journey there. Now, when you go to the Delves tab, you can find the Great Vault from there. You can awesome. also see they, Bran, they, who's they your can't... companion. You... I think they took this from uh, Shadowlands, um... from the, the Shadowlands zones that you had to complete. It's the same UI. You can change his spec and see kind of the progression there. So lots of fun UI additions and improvements that have made Delves that much more fun. The team has also made significant changes to the Mythic Plus dungeons. Can you elaborate more on that? Yeah, so actually, not only is Mythic Plus getting some changes, but also the core progression of dungeons has, has shifted quite a bit. So if you've been playing Dragonflight Season 4, you might have seen that um, Mythic Zero has actually gotten quite the facelift. You know, something that we have noticed in the past is Mythic Zero was great for like two weeks of an expansion mm -hmm. and then nobody really needed to do it anymore because they had just progressed into Mythic Plus. So with The War Within, a Mythic Zero will be the equivalent of what, you know, if you haven't played since Shadowlands, a uh, Mythic 10 might have been. So it's quite difficult and um, will be equally as rewarding. But, you know, we wanted to capture that audience of people who loved that feeling of the mega dungeons where, you know, there's still progression, but also there's no timer, right? So if that was something that maybe put you off from yeah, Mythic I, Plus, I really this didn't is something that you can still because of do with your friends. And hey, you can run AFK if you need to in the middle of these. Great. Um, but for Mythic Plus itself, we really took a huge step back and wanted to do a major affix refresh 
uh, we have gone through multiple iterations of that on the beta. You know, we got a lot of feedback from our first iteration of it and have really pivoted significantly since then. It was kind of neat because we had some players that said, we really like the direction of these affixes, these I don't know about, and then other players that felt the exact opposite. I'm not sure about these, but I really like this direction. And really what it helped us crystallize was we had multiple groups of players that wanted different challenges out of the same Mythic Plus system. Historically, affixes have been a one-size-fits-all approach to challenge and variety. But it was kind of a cool moment. Morgan came to the gameplay engineering team and was like, hey, we got this feedback. We have this idea for making affixes target different level ranges rather than applying to the entirety of Mythic Plus. And the design solution ended up being pretty elegant for engineering to implement. It was like this beautiful confluence of events where we were able to turn this around within, I don't know, two weeks or something like that yeah. and get the full revamped system back on the beta for players to test. Yeah, it was really awesome to see kind of that all come together so quickly. So, you know, what players I've seen now and what will be going uh, live with The War Within Season 1 is uh, a version where Zalatath actually plays a major role in the affixes, um, you know, from the beginning up until level 12. And it's very much one of the goals we had to make sure that the story plays a part in all oh, of okay. the content. So, so they're really basically going back to Wrath of the Lich King when the Lich King would show up at different points in the story to keep you interested and to keep you um, wanting to kill him, you know, wanting to see the end game. So the fact that she shows up is kind of like a, a reminiscent of that, which is something that people have been asking for for a long time wanted to kind of achieve that by having her kind of show up in your Mythic Plus dungeon and maybe throw some spells at you and mess with you. You know, we're coming up on the 20th anniversary of World of Warcraft this year, and if you're coming back from a break or if you're a completely new player, just learning the dungeons can be daunting True. on top of affixes and things like that. So this sort of granular way that affixes apply challenges to the dungeons allows players to engage with them in the way that they want to be challenged. Something that we added in Dragonflight, which is the, the follower dungeons, are, are great for that because you can have NPC companions, awesome. great. which are not real players, playing with you through the dungeon. And let's say you just changed to a new spec. I want to be a healer now. And I really Bro, want to try so that good. first before I really go into a dungeon with That's new players. So good. We know that players in dungeons often are afraid of trying out new specs. And with heroes. Like, there are specs that I love to play, but I know that I'm not good enough to play them. Um, in a group because I'm going to be judged. So I never, I end up never playing them. Like for instance, Discipline Priest, right? I love playing Discipline Priest, but he's a healer. So whenever I play Priest, I end up playing Shadow Priest because I don't feel confident enough to heal as Discipline. But with this, I can go as Discipline and play the dungeon with the NPCs, which is perfect. So I can actually play the specs I want to play. Tell us there's different flavors of new combat for people to, to try out and follower dungeons provide a way for you to just go in and, and feel it out and not be too concerned about how you're impacting other people. Yeah, that's amazing. That's Approachability really good. has been mentioned a few times. How are we applying that to PvP? Yeah, there's actually a new feature that I am personally going to play quite a bit uh, where you're going to be able to experience essentially rated battlegrounds. It's called Rated Battleground Blitz, which is a smaller number of players, and you'll be able to earn conquest and you know all the awesome rated PvP rewards while playing battlegrounds. Because you know we know there's a ton I of love battlegrounds, but I like random battlegrounds. You know, the jump into arenas sometimes might be a little bit scary. That is a much because more I don't have smaller a team for experience, it. and you know, each little mistake counts for a lot when you're in an arena. Where in a battleground, you know, there's a lot more going on. Usually, they last longer. There's objectives, um, so we really are excited about that new feature. I know. I have done a ton of, I know the community calls them YOLO RBGs, where you can just do RBGs, don't worry about voice chat, you just kind of go in and play. Yep. I always love running into those, so having this feature will kind of take that place for me. So I'll be able to earn my conquest early on in the season. You know, I know we mentioned the Great Vault quite a bit earlier when we were discussing this. Uh, we actually got a lot of feedback from our PvP players that they don't love having to have the Great Vault be such a big part of their itemization and gearing journey. Not only does it add some potential randomization, right? Like maybe first week of the season you got a weapon and I don't, and that you know kind of can create some imbalance there. But also, like we're talking about accessibility, it can also cause problems where you know maybe you're a couple weeks into the season and you just now want to get into PvP, but there's True. no catch up on the Great Vault, so you can feel like you're permanently behind on PvP and it's 
maybe the, the barrier to entry is a little too high for you to get into that. So not having that in the Great Vault actually solves a lot of problems for us, giving players more agency and how they're <coughs> rewarded. And also we have much stronger catch up on things like our conquest currency for PvP players. Awesome. So we think that will be a big step forward for those for that audience and hopefully, you know, inspire some people to, to check out PvP. Uh, I'm gonna be doing random there. BGs. Raiding a lot is though. an integral part of endgame. How is the team approaching raids this tier? Yeah, so Nerebar Palace is going to be an epic experience. Ooh. You know, Nerubians galore in there. Nice. And one of the cool new features that we're introducing with War Within is to play through the raid, or at least experience the ending uh, with Queen Anserac solo. So we wow. wanted to make sure that for people who were really engaged in that story at the end game, but maybe didn't want to go into queued content or don't have a whole group to go into the raid with, they'll still be able to see that epic finale. Nice. Something else that I think is really fun, there's a lot of variety in player skill across all of our player types in the game, and we have a lot of difficulties for them. But even within a single raid, there can be a lot of, you know, progression that you're experiencing. And with Dragonflight, we added a new item upgrade system where you could upgrade some of your gear. But some players also found that they might not be able to quite get over that hurdle on one of the maybe the end boss or something that comes as the penultimate boss so we're adding a new uh, quest that will unlock uh, about a month into the war within that every week you'll get a little bit more powerful it's 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 kind of reminiscent of like hell screams war song okay. back in yeah. ice crown citadel but you'll have to kind of earn your way through that progression so not only is there awesome gear to be earned as you progress through the raid but we wanted to make sure that for people who might take a little bit longer there's some more progression along with just the gear that buff's applied throughout your warband right it's not just on the character yeah that's another really fun awesome. thing again like that was something that maybe would have that's just been really applied helped, to a single really character, but so in War Within, that buff is across my whole warband. That's in cool. The raid. While we are talking about raids, I would love to bring it up, the self-highlight option, mm -hmm. which I'm a huge fan. Uh, you can highlight yourself and persist that, but now you can even have an icon on your head hmm. that nobody can take from you. So <laughs> that is awesome, you know, for plays I'm included that I cannot find myself in the whole chaos of a raid boss or even Mythic Plus. There's also another option that's called Show Silhouette When Obscured. If you have that on, there is a silhouette about of your character between that pillar, let's say it's a pillar. So you see your character there. It, it I, saves... I always call those like the flag boss or the tree boss, where it's yes. like, ah, oh, the flag is in my camera. <laughs> That's really cool, Laura, and I love that. And you know, not only those cool options, but there's so much more to explore in the War Within, and I'm really excited for our players to come on this journey with us, both players who have been with us all through Dragonflight, as well as players who might be returning. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this look into endgame content, and we look forward to seeing you in Kazalgar. Well, it does look promising. I'm excited. I think it's going to be fine.